It's a blessing when I see the dark clouds parting. Thank y'all for coming back this afternoon, and uh, I want to thank you for uh, just being who you are. And uh, Megan asked me, said, you introducing Bradley? I said, I reckon so. She said, well, after this morning, I think I want to introduce him. I'm like, eh. I, how about I just get up there and handle it? But uh, no, um, uh, thank y'all for everything. Um, just like this morning, remember Preacher, his surgery's scheduled for Tuesday. Um, remember the the homegoing service on Wednesday um, at 12, and I know he announced it this morning, but uh, if you're able to come, just be mindful that you may have to wear a mask inside the building uh, for pew, pew uh, requests. And if we do get a little tight in here, um, we will open up the other rooms, and uh, we got the fellowship hall we can throw some TVs up in as well. But um, just remember Dwayne and, and the family going through this hard time. I, I can't imagine what he's having to face, but uh, God will supply his need. So y'all uh, y'all just remember him in your prayer. And uh, I know there's many, uh, many ones that I'm overlooking that I'm not thinking about. But uh, is there anybody has any prayer requests we need to mention before we go to the Lord in prayer? Miss Carolyn? Uh, I just want to mention... Uh... I texted him back for Todd Branch this afternoon and uh, just want to remember their family. And uh, he said that uh, Brother Billy Joe had a bad day yesterday. And they were praying that he'd have a better day today. So uh, just, uh, he said that Stacy was very worried about her dad. So just remember them. Oh, yes, I remember uh, <clears throat> Brother Billy Joe. As, as he said, that. Uh, Family's worried, and uh, just pray for them through this hard, difficult time. Miss Carolyn? Remember my brother, like I said, they done the chemo, and they got rid of the cancer, but he's sick from the chemo and stuff now. Just remember him, but he's lost and undone. And remember her and cousin that she's had back surgery. Keep remember Jackie. She's still weak and not able to get around that good now. Yes, ma'am. Remember, uh, remember both these requests. Most of all, um, her brother, remember uh, his lost condition. Uh, anybody else? Remember Miss Abigail, she fell when she did not trampoline, they then broke her arm. Yeah, yeah, I, I read that. Um, so definitely remember uh, Miss Abigail. I know it's scary when it's when it's your when it's your baby going through it, but um, just definitely remember them. And in their midst of everything that seems going on. Anybody else? Well, if not, we're going to go to the Lord and word of prayer. And then after, after, uh, after we do so, um, I ask um, Haley and Ellie if they'd come sing for us. And then it was requested Lane and the ladies would come. So um, I don't know if that's the name of their group, but it sure does sound good. Um, but uh, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for your goodness and your grace. I thank you, dear Lord, for being a good God, even when we're not. Father, for being faithful when we're not. Father, for uh, being, being in our tomorrow, dear Lord, and loving us in such a way, dear Lord, that you not only take care of us, dear Lord, but we really have nothing to worry about because it's all in your hands. But Father, going through this life, dear Lord, seeing sickness and seeing our loved ones go through the things that they are, dear Lord, Father, I just pray, dear Lord, that you give us uh, the courage and the faith, dear Lord, to stand strong, dear Lord, and remembering who you are through the hurt and the pain, dear Lord. Father, help us to never get our eyes off of you. Father, I pray tonight, dear Lord, that you'd be uh, with the man of God as he as he's been prepping this afternoon, dear Lord, and as you've been speaking to him, dear Lord. Father, just use him like never before. Father, fill him up and pour him out tonight, dear Lord. Father, just bless him, his family, dear Lord, and, and just help us all, dear Lord, through the message, whatever you laid on his heart, dear Lord, to draw just a little bit closer to you. Father, we love you tonight and everything we ask in your name. Amen. All right, Lane and the ladies, come on.
God's mercy was with me all of the way.
Thank y'all. That, that, was, that was good. And I'm going to tell you, if there's ever a time that we need God, it's now. If there's ever a time that you think God's walked out and forgot about you, you need to look back and readjust your eyesight. Because there's never been a time that he's left you alone. Um, but before Bradley comes, I just wanted to, uh, to get up here and introduce him. I've known Bradley for a few years now. And uh, he's crazy about like me, I guess. And when we get together, we never know what we're going to get into. But um, I'm thankful for, uh, for Bradley. I'm thankful for his commitment. And uh, I, told, uh, I told him earlier that this morning... I was in the bathroom, and uh, I heard the door open, and uh, then I heard a young man say, hey, daddy, and it was Lucas. I said, no, nah, I'm not your daddy. I said, "In some big shoes to fill. Oh, I thought you was daddy. I said, no, nah. um, but I'm going to tell you what, if, they, uh, if I could be another man with a big heart, if I could be and choose to be somebody else, it'll be somebody with a big heart, like Bradley Morrison. And, uh, brother, you come on and preach what the Lord laid on your heart. Been looking forward to it. Big mouth. <laughs> I was going to say, if he thought I was his grandpa Bonnie. So, me and folk, if you go in the bathroom, somebody tries to take up a conversation with you, it's probably Lucas. <laughs> I told him, I said, son, quit talking to people in the bathroom. I said, at least wait till they get out, and that way you know who they are. <clears throat> <laughs> Exodus chapter 24 You know if you go to thinking back in a time in your life that God ain't been faithful, you can't find it. You think about the things that's going to come up ahead of you, you think about God being faithful, you can't not find it, that He's not going to be there. He's not going to be there to take care of you. He's not going to be there to see you through anything that you come in contact with. That's the type of God I serve. He's never, leave, he's never left me nor forsaken me. No. <clears throat> and He will not leave you either. No, we'll leave Him. We'll leave him by the wayside and say, well, you know what, God, I'll come back and get you when I decide it's time for me to, to meet back up with you. But he'll never leave you. He'll be right where we, le where we left him. <clears throat> if you just get a hold of him and hold on, he'll, he'll see you through. That's our problem. We try to see, see, us, see ourselves through these things that come in our life. We try to do it on our own. We don't try to let him lead us and guide us through it. I know in my life I get in trouble a lot of times because I want to do something on my own. I want to start that first step and start heading in the direction I think that I'm supposed to go in. But nine times out of ten, God, well, he puts it in reverse and we go back and start over where he wanted to start at. A lot of times he'll pick up and meet you where you, where you started at. But most of the time you're going to have to go back and start all over and do it the way he wants it done. Exodus chapter 24, starting in verse, uh, verse 12. <clears throat> and the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me and to the mount and be there. Remember those two words, be there. And I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up and his minister Joshua and Moses went up into the mount of God. And he said unto the elders, Tarry ye here for us until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. And the glory of the Lord abode upon, the mount, upon, upon mount Sinai, and the cloud, over, cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. 
And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. Brother Travis, you lead us to the Lord in word of prayer and ask God to bless. Thank you, Lord. Lord, uh, uh, we thank you one more time for being there to come to your house. Lord, I pray that you have your hands upon your man of God. Lord, I pray that you fill the full that pours out over on us. Lord, yes, Lord. Come to worship you in truth and spirit, Lord. I pray that uh, you'll use him like no other. You bless him yes. and his family, Lord, to stand and he takes for you. And we'll give you all the honor and glory and the praise. Yes, yes. Lord, in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Travis. <clears throat> I started to see if you had anything in your Bible. Man, I was speaking at you this morning and told you to stick something in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'll hurry up and get out of the way then. <clears throat> now there in verse 12, it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me and to the mount and be there. You know, you go to thinking about be there. Think of all the things that Moses would have missed if he hadn't been there. Think of all the things in your life if you hadn't been there where God wanted you to be. You know, first question I want to ask is where is there? You know, there for, is, for a lot of people is different places. You know, so for some people it's, it's pastoring a church or being a preacher. For some people it's just teaching. For some people it's singing. Some people it may be on a mission field. But you know, you're not going to get the blessings that God's, God wants to give you if you're not there. You know, there's where God wants you to be. You know, like I said, it's different for everybody. No two people's lives are the same. Sometimes God will use the two people to do a work for Him, but chances are He's going to ask one person to do something different than He asks the other person. He's always asking His, His chosen ones to do something for Him. But it's up to us whether or not we're going to be willing to do that, whether or not we're going to be willing to turn loose of what we're holding on to and to go there with Him. You know, there is a center of His will in your life. And that's a hard hard thing for some people to find a lot of times. I know I struggle with it. God, am I in, in your will? God, am I where you want me to be? Am I doing what you're fully asking me to do? But you can guarantee you that there is where the center of His will is going to be. He's not going to have you off over here in left field somewhere doing something that you don't even know what's going on. Sometimes it may feel that way, but His mighty hands in there working. He's showing, He's doing something that you don't quite understand. And there was a time in Moses' life, He didn't understand what was going to go on in his life. But He went. He went and done what God asked Him to do. You know, I guarantee you one thing, that there is not, in your life, is not going to be living amongst the world. It's not going to be out here doing what you want to do. It's not going to be out here doing what the world sees good in their eyes. It's going to be snuggled up close to Him. That's where there is going to be. So if there is a point in your life and you're looking and saying, God, I think I'm where you want me to be, and it don't line up with His Word, and it don't line up with, with what you've seen live through down through the years, I guarantee you you're not there where God wants you to be. You're where probably you want to be, but you're not where there is where He's wanting you to be. And I know I keep saying there, and it's probably confusion, but there was no other word that come to mind. It says it right there. He says, come up to me into the mount and be there. So that's what we run with this evening. You know, we're supposed to separate ourselves from the world. And the main reason we separate ourselves from the world is so the world can see something different in us. If I'm going out here living like hell and the devil and telling everybody I'm saved, I'm doing God an injustice. I'm doing my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ an injustice because some people see that and say, well, you know what, if that's what a Christian is, I'm just as good as they are. Yeah. You know, if that's what going to church would do for you, why in the world would I want to go? I, I can be just as happy as that, they are and, and not be quite half the grouch that they are if I just stay at the house. So I believe I'm, I'm better off than they are. We're supposed to live our lives so that it reflects Christ. When people look at us, when they see our life, they should see Jesus in our hearts. They should see it all over our face. You know, there shouldn't be any question. You know, there's, I can remember when I was in high school, there was several different tragedies that, that people died unexpectedly and you was questioning, well, wonder where they wound up at. That's one thing. I don't want people to ever have to question where I wound up at. I don't want people to have to have a second doubt of where I wound up at. Because I want to live my life so that people says, you know what, that old boy was saved. And he had something different than what the world's got. And that's the way you should want to live. Yes, sir. You know, to get there, we must be faithful. 
1 Corinthians 4, 2 says, Moreover, it is required and steward that a man be found faithful. You know, we're supposed to be faithful to his house. You're not going to get there by not being faithful to his house. You're not going to get there by picking and choosing. Well, today I'll worship you today, God. Today I'll serve you today, God. But, you know, it's getting closer to the weekend. And I'll put you on the back burner. Maybe, maybe Sunday morning we'll hitch back up and we'll go to church together and we'll make things right. We've got to be faithful all the time. We've got to be faithful all the time. Faithful to his people. You know, we're a big family here. You know, some of you are blood kin to me. Some of you are royal blood kin to me. I guess we all blood wash somewhere along the way, whether it be blood here or blood in heaven. But, you know, we're supposed to be faithful to our brothers and sisters in Christ. We're supposed to lift each other up. We're supposed to encourage our brothers and sisters in Christ. Because, you know, there's times in our lives where we get to the point where we can't pray. I, I mean, I've been times in my life where I got to the point I could not pray for myself. I needed somebody else praying for me to be able to get me through. There's situations that come up in our lives. I, I can't help but think of Brother Dwayne and the situation he's going through right now. He needs our prayers. He needs our encouragement. Yeah. You know, you, we may not all be able to go to his house and sit with him, but one thing's for sure, we can all pray for him. Yeah. We can all lift him up in prayer and say, Lord bless Brother Dwayne. Help him through this tough time. We're supposed to be faithful to our brothers and sisters in Christ. We're supposed to be faithful to His Word. You know, we can't forsake His Word and expect God to lead us to where there He is. We can't just put it by the wayside and say, Well, you know what? I'll take it with me to church on Sunday and we'll, I'll set it in the pew and, and we'll, we'll read through it when the preacher does, does his message and we'll maybe use it during Sunday school and then go back home and put it on the shelf. I fall guilty of that a lot of times. I'll get wrapped up in the world, get wrapped up in the week, and before you know it, Sunday's coming around, and I don't know what the Sunday school lesson's going to be about. I don't know. I've missed my, my daily Bible readings, but we're, we've got to be faithful to His Word if we're going to get there where God wants us to be. Don't expect to get there if you're not willing to be faithful to Him. You cannot get there if you're not going to be faithful to Him. God will ask you to do something, and you'll... Try to go through the motions, but if you're not being faithful to Him, you're not going to reach the destination that He wants you to be. Because of the faithfulness of Moses, he was willing to go there with God. You know, we've got to be willing to go there with God. God can set a path before us and, and have a plan mapped out in our lives. And if we're not willing to go, it ain't going to do no good. But you know, the thing about it is, God knew that we weren't going to go. We was going to be stubborn and hard-headed. So a lot of times he slaps us around pretty good and he'll get you to where you need to be so that you'll be faithful. But because of his willingness, because of his faithfulness of Moses, he was willing to go there with God. You know, you see people praying and say, I wish God would use me. I wish God would, would do something big in my life. I wish God would allow me to teach. I wish God would call me to preach. I wish God would do this for me. I wish God would do that for me. God's not sitting there saying, I won't do that for you. He may not allow you to do everything that you ask of Him. But a lot of times, we don't get to do it because we're not willing to do what He's asked us to do. You know, for the longest time, I, I didn't want to surrender the call to preach. I, I didn't want to. I, <clears throat> I wanted to do what God asked me to do, but I was still am <laughs> scared to death to worry that whether I'm going to mess up. We're all human. I mean, none of us are acceptable of, of doing something stupid to ruin our testimony. But we've got to be there. We've got to be willing to go there with Him. We've got to be faithful. God won't send you there alone. You know, it, I got to thinking about that. You know, even later on down here in verse, uh, verse 13, it says, And Moses rose up. And his minister Joshua and Moses went up into the Mount of God. Moses took Joshua with him because he needed somebody to be faithful, somebody that he could trust to go there with him. You know, but a lot of times God will send you there and you may be physically by yourself. That's a tough pill to swallow sometimes when you're doing, trying to do something for God and he says, okay, I want you to go over here and I want you to do this. But over there is like this front pew right here empty. And it's just you sitting on that front pew. But you know what? One thing that you can rest assured of, He's never left you nor forsaken you. Hebrews 13, 5 through 6 says, Let your, 
<clears throat> let your conversation be without covenants and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. You know, it didn't say that I might not leave you nor forsake you. It didn't say I maybe won't leave you nor forsake you. It said I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. You can rest assured that God's going to go with you. He's going to be right there with you through the thick and the thin. He's going to be there with you with the good times and with the bad times. And whether you want Him there or not, He's going to be there with you. God won't send you alone. He won't send you there alone. And one thing you can, that can excite you a little bit is God has already been there. He, he already knows the bumps in the roads that you're going to face before you get there. He already knows the situations that you're going to face. And He's already mapped out a way to map you around those, those bumps and up, those, up and down those hills and those valleys. He has already got it planned out. If you'll just, it's kind of like you go to the amusement parks. You get in, you put that belt on, and they raise that bar down. I ain't got no control over it. You just go with it. It's about like getting on a roller coaster with God. You just get in, sit down, buckle up, and hold on. He'll take you to where you need to go. He's not going to get you over here somewhere where you shouldn't be. If you just get in with Him and go, He'll take you there, but he won't, and He won't send you alone. Another thing I got to thinking about, God doesn't force us to go there. We choose a lot of times not to go there. We say, well, God, that's going to be tough. God, that's a tough task that you asked me to do. God, that's, that's going to be hard to, for me to be able to turn loose of this thing that I'm holding on to. And I just, I just don't know that I can do it. But if we don't, what are we willing to miss out on? Are we willing for our babies to die and go to hell because we're not willing to be faithful? Are we willing for our church to split wide open because we're not willing to be faithful and not willing to love one another? Am I willing to give up some rewards in my life because I'm just too sorry to go there with God? God's not making you do anything. God wants you to do some things for Him, but He's not going to beg you. He's not going to force you to do anything. It's up to us as, as, as children of God to say, God, you've done so much for me. God, I want to do something for you. God, I need to do something for you because of all that you've done for me. I can't never serve you. I can't never worship you enough for everything that you've done for me. Think about all the things that Moses would have missed out on if he hadn't been willing to go there. He would have missed out on the fellowship with the Father. He would have missed out on some of the high points in his life. The coming down and had to wear, having to wear the veil over his face because he, he glowed because of he had been with God. He would have missed out on that. He would have missed out on being able to see God in all his glory there. He would have missed out on that. What, what are we willing to miss out on because we're not willing to go there with God? You know, he would have missed out on some big blessings. But you remember when God called Moses, he said, <clears throat> he said, I can't. But God told him I can. Yeah. You know, I was quick to say a lot of times when God was dealing with me about preaching. I know I told Brother Zach many times and he said this same thing back to me. I'd always say I can't, but he said God can, and God will. God is faithful. He is willing to do bigger and better than anything that you can ever imagine in your life if you'll just let Him. If you'll just turn loose of the things that you're holding on to, the things that, that you think really matters in this life, but it really don't. What really matters is what you do with Him. That is all that matters is what you do with Him. You know, you can have your name in lights, you can be famous, you can have all the money in the world and still die and go to hell. You know, it is, I was talking to a fellow on Friday. You know, I just do not see how people have the peace that I have and not have Jesus in their heart. How they go through life not knowing where they're going to spend eternity. A lot of people just don't care. Well, we'll worry about that when the time comes. No, it's time to worry about it now because you don't never know when you're going to take your last breath. Now is the point of time. It, it's not tomorrow. It's not next week. It's not next month. It's not, well, when I get a chance, God. No, now is the time. You know, you may already be saved and God's asking you to do something. And you're saying, no, God, I, I just don't think I can. God, I just I don't think I will. You know, it's just, that's too tough of a task. But just think about what you're missing out on. Think about what you could miss out on. 
Think about all the joy that He could bring in your life. Yeah, there's going to be some bumps. There's going to be some disappointments. Moses had some disappointing times in his life. <laughs> he had a bunch of, over a million people belly aching to him all the time about something. But God was faithful to him. God was willing to show him some things because of the stuff that he had to put up with. God will be willing to give you some things in your life if you'll just put up with some junk down here. You know, and whether he gives it to me down here or whether he rewards me in heaven, I'm a winner either way. I'm, I'm, I'm on the winning side. It don't matter. You know, we, we, get, we get bogged down with this life. We get burdened down and we say, well, God, I just can't do it. I can't go on. I can't, I can't con keep continuing. But yeah, you can. Just, he went to Calvary. The thing about it is, before he was born, he knew what he was going to have to go through. When he got up and left the right hand of the Father and come down here, he knew every day what he was going to have to face. He knew that they was going to spit on him. He knew just like our Sunday school lesson, they was going to go against him and all of his teachings. But he said, you know what? There's an old boy down there named Bradley. He's going to need me to go to the cross for him one day. He's going to need me to die for him, and I'm going to do it. It was a church called New Center. He knew there was a bunch of sinners going to be here that needed to be saved, and he still went and done it. So why in the world can I get up off of my sorry tail and do something for him? He's wanting us to go there if we'll just go. He's wanting us to be there where He can bless us and show us some things. <clears throat> Lastly tonight, there is an easy to get to, but it's rewarding. <clears throat> God didn't promise when we got saved that everything was going to be a red letter holiday. Every day was just going to be hunky dory with him. We was gonna, it was gonna be rainbows and unicorns every day. He never said that in his word, right. but he did say, "I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee." Right. <clears throat> Moses followed God, and by doing that, he was able to see God in all of His glory. Think about the rewards that Moses just just this one man was able to witness. Yeah, he done some things to keep him out of going into the promised land. But think of all the. <clears throat> he was the man that got to hold his hands up to part the Red Seas. Even though God was the one that done it, God was, he used him to do it. He used him to be in front of Pharaoh and to cast all the plagues. He used him in every situation that there, there was possible just because he was willing to go there. Just because he was willing to get up and go. By staying true to God, God got Moses there. You notice I didn't say Moses got himself there. God got Moses there because he was willing to stay true. I can't do this thing on my own. Y'all can't do it on your own. Even though we'll try, we'll get up and we'll say, you know what, today I got this. It's about like me trying to lose weight. I'll get up a lot of days and I'm like, today's going to be the day. I'm going to push back and I'm going to drink water all day long. And by the time I get to work, I've done stopped at McDonald's. Or... See, I work in a vending company, so there is food everywhere I go. So I'll get over on the honey bun aisle. I'll get over on the bear claw aisle. And because of that, I cannot resist. But it's the same way with being a Christian. We'll get up with good intentions. We'll say, I, I'm ready to fight hell and the devil today. And the first little thing that comes up, I'm, I'm done, God. Just send somebody else. Send somebody else to do it for me. Just think about that. If Moses had said, send somebody else. That crowd's down there belly aching. I mean, they hadn't even got out of sight of the Red Sea before they started complaining. The waters hadn't really even settled down yet before they started complaining. But Moses was willing to go there. If you don't get off the porch, don't expect to get there with God. You know, it's kind of like the, uh, the prodigal son, the one. He complained because he stayed on the porch. But to be able to get there, you've got to be willing to go with God. Now, don't get me wrong, the prodigal done wrong with what he'd done, but he knew where to come back to. He knew where to find that hope. But if you ain't going to get off the porch, don't complain about what God's not going to do for you. Don't be belly aching and say, well, you know what, God, I, you know, I wish you'd save my lost loved ones. God, I wish you would, would move in my life and, and let me do some things for you. When all we want to do is sit on a rocking chair and say, well, I'm saved. I'll get to heaven one of these days. No, that's not what He's called us to do. God's called each and every one of us to do something for Him. 
He may not call every one of you to preach. He may not call every one of you to teach. He may not give every one of you a voice to sing. But God's got something in store for you if you'll just do it. God's got something big for you if you'll just do it. But a lot of times we won't do the little things to get to the big things. We say, well, God, my time is more valuable than that. Why in the world would you ask me to do something little like that? Cutting the lights off, unlocking the doors. That's little, God. Well... If we can't come in in the dark, we can't do this thing. If nobody wants to unlock the doors, we can't do this thing. It takes something little a lot of times to start the big things. You know, a lot of times a big bonfire gets started with one single match. We may be that match that gets things started. You never can tell. He will see you through if you'll follow Him. There is not, there is not too far if you'll let God lead you. A lot of times we're, we want to complain and say, well, God, that's... That's too much to ask of one person. God, that's, that's too much for me. What, won't you give me just a little bit of that, that task to do? And, and, and maybe ask Zach to do a little bit for you. And maybe ask Junior to do a little bit for you. And kind of spread this thing out and we'll all work together. God wants you to do it. God wants you to be the one that's willing to go there for him. He's going to use these other boys to do something else for him. They don't need to be toting my slack plus theirs. Because I'm not willing to go there. Think about that. You, you get called to do something. God wants you to do something. And you're not willing to do it. Guess what? Somebody else has to pick up the slack. Somebody else has to carry their load. Plus your load. If Moses would have said, well, You know what God? I'm not going to go. What would Aaron and her and Joshua had to carry? Because Moses was willing to sit down. Because he wasn't willing to go. Don't miss there because of fear. A lot of people sit back and say, well, you know what? I can't do it. God, I, I just, God, that's big. I, I'm scared to death to do that. I'm scared to death every time I get up here. I better be scared because this is a mighty thing. But don't let fear keep you from doing something for God. Amen. God will give you the words. God will give you the strength that you need to get up. You know, I, I look at Brother Travis, and I remember when Brother Zach started teaching this way, and look at him. Look at Brother Travis where God's brought him from. It just amazes me what God's done for these these men that's willing to do something for Him. Well, that ain't saying much. But you did give me a chance, brother, and I sure do appreciate that. <laughs> but you, you got to be willing to go. You got to be willing to do because if you're not, somebody else will take your spot. Got to call up a white flint and he'll say, "Well, you know what? He'll cry out for me." Old big boy down there, he won't cry out for me. He'll send a boulder in here to do it. He might even send a little pebble to take my place. No more crying than I'd do for him. Don't miss there because of doubt. Don't doubt God. God will, God will do some big things for you if you'll just let Him. God will see you through some big things if you'll just step out of the way and say, God, you know what? You've got this under control. I'm going to just hold on. I'm just going to go with you. Because I can't do it, God. I can't do it without you. I'm not going to do it without you. I'm just going to, I'm just going to hold on and we're going to get there to the finish line. Yeah. Don't miss there because of fear. Don't miss there because of doubt. But you know, I've already said it one time. God already knows the outcome. Just follow Him and He will take care of the rest. You know, a lot of times we... We worry about the outcome of situations. We worry about when sickness comes in our family. We worry about when finances come in our home. We worry about everything that we shouldn't even be worrying nothing about. God's got it under control. He's done took care of it. He done seen the future. It may not be the future that I want, but God's done seen it. He's done seen the end results. And that end results is me bowing at His feet, worshiping Him one day. That's all that matters. None of this other stuff matters. None of this worldly stuff matters. Just put it all aside and just follow Him. Pick up your cross and go with Him because God is wanting you to be there with Him. He told Moses, He said, And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be there. Moses could have stayed down with the people. He could have stayed down with the Israelites and said, Well, you know what? His campfire sure is warm. I'll just, be, I'll just put my feet up and rest a while here. There's fairly good water down here. You know, company's halfway decent, and I'll just, I'll just stay down here. But he was willing to get up and go because he knew there was a brighter day coming. He knew there was going to be some things that he would miss out on if he didn't get up and go. Don't sit back and let somebody else take your blessing because you're not willing to go there. God may be dealing with you tonight. God may be wanting you to do something big for Him. God may be wanting you to do something little. But it's like I said, a lot of times a little fire starts with just a small match. 
What is God asking you to do tonight? For some of you, God may be asking you to get saved. There may be somebody in here tonight that says, you know what, I don't know where there is in my life. And the reason you don't know where there is is because you don't know God. Don't leave here tonight without knowing 100% sure that where you're going to spend eternity. Because none of us are guaranteed tomorrow. None of us are guaranteed to even get out those doors, much less see what tomorrow is going to hold for us. Don't leave here tonight without knowing for sure where you're going to spend eternity. But there may be some of you sitting here tonight and says, well, you know what, I don't know where there is because I'm hard-headed. Because I don't want to listen. I don't want to, I don't want to give in to God. Don't be that type of Christian. Give your life to Him. Get, don't just give Him part of it. And that's where I fail a lot of times. I'll just give Him part. But if I give Him all of my life, there's no telling what God would do for me. There's no telling what God could do with my family if I would just sell out and go all in for God. But I want to keep holding on and say, well, you know what? You know, things is going good over here. I, I just need to, need to see this through. It don't matter. It only matters what you do with God. That's all that matters. You know, all y'all know we're trying to build chicken houses. And they, it keeps raining. And the good Lord knows somebody somewhere needs rain. But it's not over on 2145 Adams Road. I grant you that. It is not there. But God knows that I need something. Now the lumber prices has gone up. But you know what? God's going to see it through. I'm worried to death that we're going to have to file bankruptcy before we ever even leave the gate. That's what I told the boy the other day that's going to build them. I said, now, do I need to be going talking to the bank about filing bankruptcy? Or do we need to be going building some chicken houses? He said, oh, it's going to come down. But it is going to, God's going to take care of it one way or the other. I'm going to come out a winner on the other side, no matter whether we fluffing chickens or whether we slinging crackers up at canteen. It don't matter where I'm at. But the one thing that does matter is what I'm doing for Him. The one thing that matters in your life is what you're doing for Him. Yeah. Don't miss out on some big things because we're not willing to go there. I do appreciate y'all's good attention tonight. I thank you for being here. You know, if you need to talk to... To me or Zach or anybody else around here about, about getting saved, we'll be more than glad to show you. Be more than glad if you need to come to the altar and we'll pray We, Hey, that's where you find results at. It's not taking your burdens back with you. It's not coming in the same way and leaving the same way. You've got to leave them with Him. He's the one that can answer these things. He's the one that can fix these things. I do appreciate the opportunity to get to stand and preach tonight. And I know... Brother Jonathan can't be here, and y'all continue to pray for him as he has his surgery on, on Tuesday. I, brother, you'll never know this side of heaven, what it means to me, for you to be able to let me stand up here. And I know y'all crazy, me talking like that, but he's watching. Whether he's watching it now, whether he's dozed off, or whether he watches it tomorrow, I know he's going to see it. And I love him. I do thank him for allowing me to get up and stand in his pulpit. This is a sacred place. Don't ever take it lightly. Don't ever take it lightly what God's going to do for you, what God's going to call you to do. But I do appreciate y'all's good attention, and we'll pray and we'll be dismissed. Lord, I thank you, God, for this day. Lord, I thank you, God, for allowing me one more day, God, to get up and worship you. Lord, I, th I thank you, God, for one more time allowing me to get up and preach your word. Lord, I pray, God, that I'd never take that for granted. Lord, I pray that you bless your people. Lord, help us, God, to go there with you. Lord, help us, God, to turn loose of the things that we're holding on to in this world. Help us, God, to get out of the way, God, and let you get into the